I'm always inspired by doing this each year. The Wisconsin Lakes Partnership presents the Wisconsin Lakes Stewardship Awards each year in celebration of the extraordinary volunteer and professional efforts made to protect and improve lakes in Wisconsin. The Stewardship Awards represent a best collective effort to honor and celebrate all the incredible work that goes into ensuring the future of our state's legacy of lakes. Before we hand out the first award, award we'd like to uh, acknowledge the nominees we received for 2016. The new nominees are, in the citizen category, Fritz Funk, here, Valerie Stebano, and Ray Zolke. Please stand if you're here. There you are, Ray. In the group category, Burnett County Lakes and Rivers Association and the Silver Lake Protection and Rehabilitation District of Washington County. There you are. In the public service category, Susan Borman and Dorothy Semple, Jennifer Filbert, John Scargabo, and Bradley Steckert. If you're here, please stand. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge your 2016 Lake Stewardship Award nominees. <laughs> Our next category is for public service. Nominees in the group category this year were Susan Borman and Dorothy Semple. They are the author and illustrator of that book we all know so well and use often, Through the Looking Glass. Jennifer Filbert from the Wisconsin DNR. John Skokobo, the Army Corps of Engineers. Bradley Steckett, Washington County Land and Water Conservation District. The winner of the Wisconsin Lake Stewardship Award in the public service category goes to Susan Borman and Dorothy Semple. Congratulations. When agreeing to be part of the team revising Through the Looking Glass, the beloved book of Wisconsin's aquatic vegetation, both Susan Borman and Dorothy Semple took on a daunting task. After all, the original sold nearly 20,000 copies in 50 states. Susan, a retired DNR aquatic plant specialist, donated her time to help revise the book she helped write the first time around as an employee. Nominator Susan Knight applauded Susan for taking on some of the thornier species and issues despite some serious health crises at the time. Dorothy Semple, a Stevens Point artist, also confronted a difficult problem, providing accurate drawings that blended her own artistic sensibilities with the first edition's artwork. To make it worse, she took on the job in winter when she wasn't able to see live samples from which to work. Her results, however, speak for themselves. Without Susan and Dorothy, the second edition of Through the Looking Glass would not be the fine successor to the original that it turned out to be. They are deserving winners of a Wisconsin Lake Stewardship Award for Public Service. In the words of my all-time favorite professor, Dr. Mark Fay, I want to say that it's a great, ba great day to be alive and be a botanist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very honored to receive this award in recognition of the work that I did on Through the Looking Glass. Working on this aquatic plant guide has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. When we first wrote the book, we were simply trying to expand a small 16-page booklet we used to give out through the aquatic plant management program. Needless to say, once we got started, the scope of the project grew. It became clear that there was a real need <coughs> for a field guide that could be used by the general public, but that would include most of the plants that they were going to find when they're out in the field. We're blessed to have good support to pursue this project. So Bob Korth and I forged ahead with the remarkable artist Carol Watson doing all of the illustrations and Jeff Strobel creating the design and layout of the book. Bob and I took Carol snorkeling on some northern lakes so she could get a first-hand look at where they live, and she captured their essence beautifully. 
We wanted people using the book to feel confident that they had enough information to know what the plant was, to be able to distinguish it from other similar plants, to know something about its habitat preferences, its life cycle, its origin and range, and its value within the aquatic community. Over the years, the book has gained wide acceptance, and it's used not only by the volunteer monitors that we wrote it for, but by schools, nature centers, and many agencies. I'm usually not a fan of pop-up ads, but one time when I was doing some research on Norman Fassett, a pop-up came up. It said, if you are interested in this subject, you may also like View the Looking Glass, <laughs> a field guide to aquatic plants. I was delighted. <laughs> when Sandy Wickman contacted me several years ago to let me know it was time for some revisions to the book, I was happy to be included. She had a great team in place to work on it, including Susan Knight, Michelle Knott, Tim Food, Carol Warden, Kim Beck Beckin, Michael Putnam, Kelly Wagner, and Brock Woods as some of the key players. In a stroke of True good fortune, Jeff Strobel was available to do the layout and graphic design again. While Carol Watkins wasn't going to be able to do more illustrations, the botanical gods were smiling on us, and we found Dorothy Semple to create more wonderful drawings. Her work blends seamlessly with Carol's, and her attention to detail makes key features of, of the plants come to life. In both the first and second editions, we received critical help from the legendary Robert Freckman of Freckman Herbarium fame. He reviewed the entire first manuscript and made specimens available for both Carol and Dorothy. I like to think of him as the godfather of aquatic plants and his influence is far reaching. My interactions with everyone working on the second edition were a joy and I can't thank Susan Knight and Sandy Wickman enough for including me in this project that is so dear to me. I truly believe that the best path to conservation is education. People can only fight to save the things that they know and love. To paraphrase the Lorax, we speak for the plants, for the plants have no voices. It's people that get to make all of the choices. Thank you so much for this recognition. It makes, means the world to me. Thank you very much. It's been an honor, a privilege, and a joy to be a part of the team working on the second edition of Through the Looking Glass. So here is my heartful thanks to Sandy Wickman, Kim Beckin, Susan Knight, for your trust and your encouragement, and to Dr. Robert Freckman for your kind technical advice. Susan Borman, your creative, thoughtful text has been my inspiration. On this occasion, I also want to credit publicly a few individuals who over the past dozen or so years have been my teachers, mentors, and fellows in the field, the woods, the classroom, and the wetlands of northern Wisconsin. Your dedication to and love for the natural world has and continues to inspire and feed my spirit and my art. So in friendship and humility, I salute you. If you know any of these persons who are not here, would you please pass on the word? Linda Parker, from the United States Forest Service, Margie Briskevich, Stephen Spickerman, Landis Spickerman, Wendy Stein, Keita Sheehan, Patrick Goggin, Dara Olson, Professor Emmett Yurjevich, Dr. Freckman, and RIP Ed Voss. Thank you one and all here 
this award, I will truly treasure. Thank you.